What's up guys, in this video we're going to walk you through everything we did to this trailer to make it what I would consider the ultimate goose trailer. We've been using this thing for three years, we've worked out all the kinks, and this thing is its own functioning, completely useful tool. So first and foremost, this is a 12 foot trailer, just standard enclosed. Uh, there's all kinds of different sizes, 14 foot, 16 foot. Some people run huge trailers. One thing that I really like in a goose trailer, I like to have a smaller compact size. It's super lightweight, easy to tow long distances with good gas mileage, and really easy to not get stuck in fields. I really like the single, ax uh, single axle option. Uh, there's two axle trailers. Those are for towing really heavy weight. With a goose trailer, you don't have to worry about that because you're only carrying around decoys, which don't really weigh anything. And the single axle makes it really easy to turn. And then there's not two sets of tires on each side where you have to worry about replacing bearings and tires every year. It gets way more cost uh, inefficient to have two axles. So single axle, 12 foot enclosed trailer. There's swing door options and there's uh, gate options. This is a gate option. Swing options are also good. They kind of both have their pros and cons. Um, I'll let you kind of make that decision on your own. Um, yeah, as we come inside here, actually before we come inside, one thing that we did on the outside is we rhino lined all the whole front of the trailer and the um, the wheel wells. And that really just helps keep the, the trailer, you know, looking good, keeps it very durable. You also see we rhino lined basically the entire, any, any point where there's wear or contact. So along the doors, uh, everything is rhino lined. And then the rest of it's just a, a black, you know, sheet metal that the tra enclosed trailers come with. Um, I put two lights on, one up here, one up here. Those lights are run by the generator uh, on the front of the trailer, which I'll show you in a little bit here. And those, it's obvious, it's really good to be able to have those lights for setting up in the dark. So those uh, lights come in really handy. I ran those through to one of the outlets I built in the trailer right here. So to turn those lights on and off is just a matter of plugging in this extension cord. I wanted the ability to turn those on and off um, rather than just have them permanently on. So basically to turn those on, all you do is you plug in that cord. Um, and I'm going to go into detail later about why we have outlets in here, but I think it's really important. Uh, before we do that, I want to take you around to the other side of the trailer here. So, like I mentioned, rhino lined uh, wheel wells, rhino lined whole bottom edge. Um, in the front of the trailer, uh, one thing you'll see is there's a lock on the actual hitch and there's a, a ball hitch lock. That's really nice for, uh, you know, if you want to just leave the trailer somewhere or whatever, you don't have to worry about it getting stolen. Inside the trailer, I actually also keep a wheel lock. So with between all three of those, you're, this thing is not going to be able to get stolen, which is important because you end up having a lot of money in these things. Up here, I built a generator rack. So my uh, little Ryobi generator sits right in here on this rack. This uh, red ratchet strap is actually built specifically for its size. So this goes right over the top of the generator and I ratchet strap it down for the entire season. Um, and that's what this plugs into. So when this cord is plugged into the generator, the entire trailer runs off the generator. And I'm going to go into detail later about why this is important. But when I get home after a hunt, I can plug an extension cord in from the house to this to charge batteries, run the outlets, and everything else that we have going on inside here. So this is kind of like your master power switch, if you will. Uh, it sits right under the generator. And again, generator runs the lights and everything that requires a lot of electricity. So one thing that is really cool to have in a goose trailer is a front door and the main back door. Um, this just really lets you kind of set the trailer up and customize it a little bit more. On the inside here, it, you'll notice this thing is far from <laughs> factory. So I'm going to go through why we did everything we did and, and what we did. Um, I guess I'll start with the lights. I talked about the lights on the outside. There's also bar lights on the inside here. One straight up on the back side, one straight up in here. And then when that generator is running, everything inside the trailer is lit up. A lot of times you're setting up decoys in the dark and it's really nice to just be able to see what you're doing without having a headlamp on. After the lights, you'll notice that this whole thing is carpeted. The reason it's carpeted is it's also insulated. The reason we insulated this trailer is we kind of wanted it to be dual purpose. So this is essentially a trailer that you can camp out in. So let's say you're going on a multi-day waterfall hunt. You throw all your decoys out, you know, to hold the spot. You can go ahead, shut these doors up, plug an electric heater into one of these outlets, let that generator run, and you can heat the inside of this thing, throw down two cots, and this thing sleeps two people so comfortably it's not even funny. We've uh, also put this table in here, again, for those camping trips. Or let's say you're doing a loaf hunt, right? You're set up and you're waiting for the birds to start flying. Man, set your grill up in here, throw down some lawn chairs. You can be cooking in here. Uh, one of the hunts we had with David Wise, we did that. We had a grill set up. We were cooking up burgers and brats. And we were just waiting for the birds to start flying, you know, in the nice, comfortable shade of the trailer. Um, so the, the table is really simple. It's just on a hinge with those two flip down legs. To put it up, all you gotta do is you lift up, you fold both of these in, and then it just keeps itself up against the wall. So 
And that thing is rhino lined as well. I'm a big fan of rhino lining stuff. It's easy, it's spray on, and it makes everything not slip. So that doesn't take up any room at all, and it's it can be really handy. You'd be surprised how thankful you'd be to have a <laughs> um, a nice just spot to sit down sometimes. Um, this one does have a vent in the top that comes standard. Uh, it really helps air it out. One of the things we're doing right now is we're cleaning out all the layouts and we had a ton of barley stubble in here and it was wet and it was so nice to let it air out so it didn't get like really moldy or anything like that. Obviously there's a cabinet set up here on the front side of the trailer. That's that tire lock I talked about. Down on the bottom is where we store all of our snow covers for the layouts. These are those motion stands. I'm sure you guys have seen me use these. Um, I just keep those in here. Uh, this entire row is mojo flags. So we got just a pile of mojo flags in there. Up here, I keep a guest blind bag because we take a lot of youth hunters and first time hunters out. So it's good just to have a bag they can put all their stuff in. I've got an extra call in there to kind of help teach people how to call. Um, paper towel, uh, UV guard, which is really important. We spray all of our layouts down and stuff with this. This stuff's from dead downwind. Basically, you know that birds see on the UV spectrum, so it's really important to UV wash, AKA no UV color on anything that you're trying to hide. Um, and then just random parts for mojo flags and decoys and stuff like that. All of these cabinets are just lockable. So bang, you lock them. Nobody can get into them if you don't want them to. Um, and it's just a really slick system. Probably one of the most important things, I mentioned the generator earlier. There is an outlet back there that powers the lights on the outside, and there's an outlet up here in the front. And from that outlet, I've run an entire power strip right here. And you'll see all these Mojo chargers. All the batteries that you would see in a Mojo also run these motion stand decoys. So again, if you're on a long trip, right, um, and you need to recharge batteries and you're not in a place where you have access to power, you just let that generator run, you plug all your batteries in here, and overnight they charge, and then you don't have to worry about having dead batteries in the morning. Another nice thing is if we get off of a goose hunt, and I know I'm coming back home to park the trailer for the night, all I'll do is I'll plug all my batteries in right here in this thing. I'll shut the cabinet. And then when I get home, I'll take that extension cord from my house and plug it into the cord where the generator goes. So you're not running the generator all night on gas. It's charging from your house. That way you're not having to dig through the trailers to pull batteries out and charge them in the house. That right there is a huge time saver and a really, really good tip. Uh, back to the trailer itself. And by the way, these cabinets are just built out of wood. Um, the floor here, you'll see we put the rubber. It's like a garage rubberized... I don't even know. It's, you know, quarter inch thick rubber. Um, it, if you've been in a goose trailer when you hunt a mud field, it gets really sloppy and really nasty and it makes the uh, floorboards prone to rotting. This is a lock sealed floor of completely rubber. So no matter how nasty it gets in here, it's just a matter of getting a leaf blower or a mop or a, you know, broom in here and getting all that crap out of here. So the rubberized floor is really nice. Also, you're not slipping around like crazy. This stuff's got really good grip. Um, now we're going to get into how we kind of compartmentalize the trailer. Uh, right here is a, I got this off Amazon, I don't even know what you call it. It's, it's like a cargo net for a truck, like a truck bed. And then what I did is I put these uh, little eyelets, these hinged eyelets in here. And what that does is it lets you completely customize how you put this netting on. One on the bottom, two in the middle, three up on top. And then all you do is you clip these carabiners in and when this net is set up, what it does is it separates the front of the trailer from the back of the trailer. So what we'll do is when, the, when we're running the trailer 90% of the time, this is what it looks like. So there you go. Now what we can do is we put all of our layouts up here in the front and I'll show you what it looks like full when we restack it here. Um, but layouts will be up here. You know, we'll have all of our stakes and flags and tools, you know, all of our brooms, our shovels, everything like that will be up here. And then the bulk of the decoys will be in the back. And this really helps just compartmentalize it. And why that's important is if I know I'm going to go on a hunt, you know, let's say I'm going on a public land walk-in hunt and I know I'm going to want a dozen lessers that I want to carry in, I'll actually leave the lesser decoys up in front here. And all I have to do is come through the front door to get the stuff that I need. So if I want to, if I'm going on a hunt with somebody that's got a trailer and they're like, hey, all you need to do is bring your layouts. All I have to do is come in the front door, grab the layouts and go. I don't have to dig in through the back door, through the mess of decoys. And I don't have to empty my trailer every single time I want something. So this right here is really cool. Uh, again, it's completely customizable on where you want to put this. And one thing that I did with this is I actually put these same eyelets in right back here. When I was first building this trailer, again, this was, you know, we've been hunting with this thing for three years. So we've worked out all the kinks and I do consider this kind of the ultimate trailer set up for goose hunting. I didn't know how I was going to keep the decoys from falling out of the trailer. And one thing that I'll show you when I load this thing up uh, here in a little bit 
is we actually came up with a better system. What we do is we put all of our shells inside of big garbage cans. And those big garbage cans stack three of them. One, two, three, right here where the, the gate of the trailer is. And that stops the goosalanche and, and all the uh, geese from falling out of the back of the trailer here. So I actually went away from the cargo net from holding everything in. And I went to the you know barrel block system. And you'll see it works slick as can be. Um, man, that was a lot. <laughs> you know, you... You just kind of, you start adding stuff, you know, this year you're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did that? Wouldn't it be cool if we did that? And then next thing you know, three years later, you get a trailer that, that looks like this. So this didn't happen overnight. Um, it's something that we just kind of added to and added to. I think I covered pretty much everything inside here. Oh, one thing that is nice. So the pegboard's nice because these little things right here, you know, if you're inside camping or whatever, it's customizable on, you know, you can hang coats, whatever you want. And another thing that's kind of nice is, you know, if you end up whacking them, you can do a pretty cool pile picture hanging them off the door. I've, I've done that a couple times in different snow hunts we've had. So the pegboard is, you know, kind of multi-purpose purpose and just a nice little, little tool we've added over the years. Um, on the outside, I obviously have locks. Um, I use the, I think they're master lock. They're solid. So somebody with bolt cutters can't easily get in there and, and cut the cuttable part. So I have had somebody try to break into my trailer before, not fun. Um, I do believe these locks are a great incentive for people or a deterrent for people to be able to get in your trailer. Also, you'll see right here, this is a magnetic strip. Every single one of these doors has an alarm on it. They're just the, the cheap $5, you know, open alarms you can get off of Amazon. And it's just an alarm system that basically when the door opens, it goes off and it continues to go off until you reach in and shut it off. If you're not somebody who knows what the trailer is made out of, you just hear the alarm, you freak out and you run away and it has saved me once already. So those little cheap door alarms can save your entire trailer. And then again, these locks that are not easily cuttable by bolt cutters. One more thing Jake reminded me of, you'll see that I only have a wire uh, on one side. And the reason we did that, it's just easier to get in and out. That's one of the disadvantages of the, the fold down door system versus the, the barn door style trailers. Uh, just having this cable on one side lets you really easily just skip this corner and come out this way. Pro tip, make sure that you leave the open side the same side as your door. So the action side of your trailer is always going to be the side with the side door. So everything I do is kind of, when we're setting up our spread, it's all out in this direction. It's never really this way. And again, the cable on this side helps the door come up and then you can just easily get through this way. So pretty slick little system. I talked about rhino lining already, but we rhino line this entire gate. The gate is uh, ultimately what you're gonna end up slipping on if it's just solid wood. So this thing is as grippy as can be. It's really easy to get in and out of this thing. Another thing to do just as far as trailer maintenance, we just did it, but we just use the, you know, the garage door grease, the grease lightning, white lightning, whatever they call it. Um, you just spray all the hinges, you know, just make sure those things are functioning. One thing you'll notice is when you're doing hunting areas that are really cold, you know, it's snowing, the snow is melting. A lot of times this seal right here between the uh, door and the um, top of the trailer up here, it'll get stuck. Take that same grease that you grease all the hinges with and just hit that and rub it on it. And what it does is it won't let your entire door freeze to the trailer. We've had that happen twice already this year. And that little garage door grease works works wonders for having it not stick like that. If you're enjoying this trailer video, make sure you check out the other video I did on how we winterize this thing and what we do to get set up for season. I go into detail on what we do for our decoys, what we do for our layouts, everything we do to get prepped. I will drop a link to that video in the description below and in the cards right up here. All right, so we talked about the whole design of the trailer and everything like that. Now I'm loading it back up. I wanted to show you how I organize this thing because I think it's pretty important for being able to get to stuff, access stuff, and really use the full design of the trailer and how, how we made it the way we did. So I just put the layouts back in here. I always load the front part of the trailer first. Right here are five layouts, believe it or not, in just this front part of the trailer. So we have five layouts stacked up here. Uh, this bag right here is full of socks. We have all kinds. We have white rocks, we have dive bombs, we have original socks. All of them have the Flock 3D heads, which is really nice, but there's 10 dozen in this bag. And then all the stands that we need right here for all the full bodies. Again, we have a huge eclectic mix of decoys, but uh, one of the things that we have are GHG motion stand decoys, which I think is really important for those, you know, you get a little bit of wind, you get a lot of motion going in your spread, and it mixes up with the, uh, the Bigfoots that we have that don't move. So some decoys moving, some decoys not moving, super natural, right? So all the stands are up here. In this bucket is where we keep all of our flags. We keep the flags, we keep extra stakes for if you're hunting sandbars or if, you know, the ground is, is easy to get stuff in. Um, 
and then I'm also gonna put the tools in the front. I stubbed the snow tools back in here. We got three white brooms and two white shovels for those snow days. And that's basically everything we keep in the front of the trailer. So you're gonna notice that there's a lot of extra room here. And that extra room is for, like I said, those, those random hunts where I know I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna wanna have easy access to those decoys. So if I'm gonna be going to do a public land hunt where I'm gonna wanna have you know, a dozen GHG Lesser Canada's to walk in with, I'll leave that bag in the front right here. I can easily access it through the front side door and I don't have to go in through the back through all the other mess of decoys. So that's basically what the front of the trailer looks like. Now I'll show you how we load the back. I almost forgot the one last thing that we always put in the front of the trailer. This is Delta's dog blind. If you haven't watched the hunts, you're missing out on this little system. But basically this is where my dog hides. These are just two PVC pipes I screwed in to the bottom of the decoy. It lays like that, and I can make it as low profile as I want. This head just goes on here, and Delta just crawls right in under there. So that's how we hide our dog in the field. It doesn't matter how crappy the height is or how low the stubble is. She just tucks underneath this goose decoy. I think he's never seen her, so. This goes in the front of the trailer. So I have uh, two different dozen slotted bags for lessers. I always stack those on each other up against the sidewall. So that kind of starts it. And then I take my six slotted for graders and I start going sideways with them like that. So there, all my slotted bags are now in, right? So these are all the, the motion sand decoys, what I like to call the kill hole geese, everything that looks really good. So these are all stacked in here and ready to go. Now we're gonna start loading in the shells and all the single decoys. I just stack the shells like that. Those are the DOA sleepers. I love those things. I plan on getting some more of these. They're really easy to put out. They're fast and they look really good. All right, so again, we use this as the back wall. I experimented with the mesh net system. It was just kind of useless after we got these bins in place. So these bins line up like that. One goes there, one goes here, it's this side. The other one wedges in the middle. Here we go. So you line up the garbage cans with the silver track. Now what you do is you've built yourself a back wall so that geese, all the decoys have something to pile up against. Now we just start chucking all the Bigfoot in here and we fill up all this space with decoys and basically the trailer's loaded. All right. And there you go. That's the last one. So that is how we load this bad boy. Like love. Oh, I heard a goose lynch. Bam. Pinch that door. Shut that there. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Cribs. <laughs> Make sure you drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you do different. Otherwise, always, you click that subscribe button, click like, and we'll catch you in the next video.